Welcome, I'm Dawn Coker, the Elementary Math Curriculum Specialist for Cumberland County Schools. In this video, we're going to be looking at an essential resource um, for elementary mathematics called the Meaningful Math Tasks. Now, if you've already seen the previous video on um, our framework for instruction, you will know that in Cumberland County, it's recommended that we start off grappling with a problem before going into our direct instruction. That enables us to see what students can do um, before actually teaching something, just to make sure that we're on the right track. These meaningful math tasks are meant to be the grappling problems that we can use before going into our direct instruction. So you would select a meaningful math task that's aligned with whatever you're going to be teaching for that day. So if I'm teaching multiplication, I'm going to pick a, a task on multiplication so everything throughout my lesson is on multiplication. Uh, we'll talk about that more in a minute. Uh, the tasks are broken down by grade level and by quarter. And then there's two parts to this to this resource. There are the student tasks, and then there is a teacher's guide. There's a page in the teacher's guide for each task. This tells you tips for implementation, questions, vocabulary. And let's take a look at that right now. So like I said, there's two components. This is an example of what one of the tasks looks like that you would show students. This is the student task. And this is in a PowerPoint so that you can um, change the names if you want to make this meaningful for your kids, change the situation. So uh, like I said, this is in a PowerPoint. Um, and if, if you can see this, you probably can't. At the bottom, it does tell you what weeks of the unit you should be using this and what standards this task matches. Then the matching teacher's guide page has a small version of the task. It also tells you the standards that, or, sorry, the time frame for teaching the task and the standards you will be teaching if you do all parts of the, of the information in the teacher's guide. Now, if you're only giving the kids the task to solve and then talking about it, you probably won't be hitting all these standards. So you really need to make sure that you're doing some teaching around the task after giving it to the students. Uh, the components of the teacher's guide, it lists suggested materials that you can provide to your students, vocabulary that you will want to teach during the, um, introducing that task or during teaching a lesson around that task, and then there's some questions that you can ask. You can either use these ta questions as the students are independently grappling or trying to solve the task, or you can use them after you've pulled the kids together, after they've tried to solve the task, they might be successful, they might not, that's okay, um, then you can ask the class these questions about the task. Uh, then the last part is teaching points. Uh, right here, there is a list of ideas for what you can do after letting the kids grapple or try to solve the task. Um, this would be moving into your direct instruction. So at this point, you would probably select one, maybe two of the teaching points to focus on during the remainder of your lesson. So again, let me just reiterate, the whole lesson might be around multiplication. We're going to start giving the students a task that they can grapple with. And again, they might be successful, they might not. And don't let them struggle too long. So if the whole class is really grappling and it's not productive, just stop it. Do your little math talk where you share out some strategies and then move into one of your teaching points or your direct instruction. There is a page in the beginning of the teacher's guide that gives you the steps for implementation. Um, and the, the page does suggest that you pose the problem, you focus in on the situation, make sure that there's no unknown words that the students will get, stumble over. Um, and one thing that I like to do at this point when I'm focusing in on the situation is to show the task but cover up the questions. So that way the kid is, the students aren't focusing right on that question and trying to do something with the numbers, but instead they have to think about that situation. And then I ask the kids to brainstorm everything that they notice about that task. They might say something even like, oh, he has a brown belt. That's okay, except everything that they're noticing right now. I would jot it down on a chart paper on the board, and then afterwards I would say, okay, now predict what question you think they're going to ask. There's a question hidden under here. If you were the teacher, what question would you ask? Then I reveal the question, and then the students can go ahead and grapple. So as the students are grappling, we're on number three, they can either do this independently or with a partner or start off independently and then go to a partner and kind of discuss what they're doing. And then the next part is to do your math talk or have students share out their solution strategies. And then the last part again is your direct teaching. So picking a strategy to teach around that task. One thing that I've um, had pop up from a lot of teachers who have been using this is they have concerns about making sure that they're meeting the needs of all students. Uh, a lot of times, some students might be really struggling and having a hard time while other students are flying through the task and they're sitting there ready 
for more. So what do you do? There is a page towards the beginning of the teacher's guide that addresses this and gives you a whole bunch of strategies for meeting those needs of all students. I hope you found this video helpful. Have a good day.